primary responsibility to Northern Command is to provide Army forces for the Northern Command commander in the execution of some of his missions in support of homeland defense, uh, civil support, and theater security cooperation missions. So what does that mean? That means that the Army formations uh, that come out of the Department of the Army, the, the combative command, this in this case the Northern Commander, uh, has a uh, obligation to perform a number of missions. Like with our partners in Mexico, we build partner capacity. To do that, we need soldiers to partner up with our Mexican uh, partners down there in the form of, uh, of their Sedena, which is their Army. And we do uh, mission training with them on patrolling uh, counter IEDs. A lot of the things that we learned in theater, for example, as lessons learned in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, we take those particular lessons learned and we train our partners so that they don't have to learn those same lessons if they encounter that same type of adversary. From a civil support perspective, we support, we're defense support to civil authorities. Similar to what you saw in our recent vibrant response exercise, where we have both a local, a state, and a federal partners, and we are in a partnership. Here in this particular theater, we are not the, uh, the principal federal agency. Somebody else is. And so we're in support of, in this case, FEMA, and we bring a lot of unique capabilities. We have a lot of uh, resources, uh, but in the homeland, uh, with the National Response Framework, we work within a construct with our other federal partners in order to provide those resources uh, to the states. Where do you want to see the command go? Where's your, what's your vision? Having served in the capacity as the Deputy Commanding General, uh, I have had a, a uh, valuable uh, opportunity to sit back and, and kind of think about that very question. I think personally for me, where I see the organization going uh, is really um, expanding on our partnership building here in the homeland. I, it, it's critical. Uh, it's, it's how we do business. So uh, I want to do more uh, with regards to going out and engaging our uh, state uh, partners and our federal partners. And I also want to go work with our Mexican partners and our Canadian partners. Is this exercise a good example of how Army North would respond to a catastrophic event? It's important that we work together. Uh, nobody can do this alone, and uh, I think uh, these types of exercises, the most important thing that comes out of it is really the partnership and the friendships and the relationships you build that hopefully will serve you uh, into the future. As a citizen, I find it hard to get my county to work with my city to even just clean the streets. How do you work this inner relationship with other federal agencies? I think primarily the big challenge uh, in a catastrophic disaster that you have to overcome is the ability to communicate and then share information, both horizontally and vertically. When you roll into a, an event like this, local officials are already in place. They have a great uh, deal of information. And so trying to build a common operational picture of the incident site uh, to me is key and, and that's one of the hardest things to do because you have to grab and gain that information from all the entities that are operating in, in the uh, infected area and that means a whole of government approach and a whole of government common operational picture and that's difficult we're just one small part of that. That's scary. It is scary. It is scary but I will tell you we got some some great folks as identified during this exercise that work hard to build that. And uh, we had a sharing of information between the state and the federal and FEMA and ourselves during this exercise. And we got, we got fairly close. And I feel absolutely encouraged by the fact that uh, through our efforts here, uh, we're better prepared. And I think uh, closer to getting at a rapidly developed common operational picture should a national uh, or a, a catastrophic disaster happen. I've talked to people out in the field and they all indicate that there's a lot of detail here and that there's devil in the details. I think some of that's correct. I think meticulous attention to detail is important. Um, I think not being late to need in this particular uh, type of environment is uh, probably one of the most important things of all. The American people have an expectation that when you show up you're going to be able to deliver. Uh, that's part of what this exercise is about as well. 
um, is is putting a mindset in our in our formations and in our leaders that uh, understanding the commander's intent is probably the most valuable thing to understand when you're in this environment uh, because no plan is going to survive first contact and so you need those leaders out forward at the tip of the uh, operation that can make decisions that uh, can support the American people and that's that's very important. Just out of curiosity, an exercise like this, vibrant response, is being built around a terrorist attack. From your perspective, do you consider this to be a what if or a when if? Just recently, we had uh, Japan impacted by an earthquake followed by a tsunami that destroyed one of their nuclear reactors. If, if you take a look at that natural disaster, it created some of the effects that we have here today. As a matter of fact, the Japanese responded with over 100,000 soldiers. And many of those soldiers actually responded into the hot zone and had to put water into the reactor in order to cool it down. Uh, that's a real world event uh, that, that, that requires the same technical expertise that we have that resides in this particular enterprise that we're exercising here. We hope that a, a terrorist situation of this magnitude never happens, but I think it's important to serve the American people to be prepared for this type of thing and for the American people to have confidence in their military that we're going to respond with the same tenacity that we did the past 12 years in persistent conflict to something that happens in the homeland. Matter of fact, probably more so because this is our homes. This is our states. These are our families. So I think it's important um, for us to train to the top and the highest and the most dangerous course of action so that we're prepared and I think the American people expect that. You talk about this exercise as a critical learning tool for your soldiers but it is half the size that has been before in the past and I think that's due to budget cuts. So what's the impact? I look at it as really an opportunity for us to take a look at both virtual, live, and construct uh, type of training. We, we have all that going on in this particular exercise. Uh, everybody is feeling the crunch of the economic uh, and, the, and the budget cuts. And so I think, uh, to be honest with you, uh, we got to take a look, a hard look at how we do business. And we got to leverage technologies to get at uh, the training. But I think it's also important for commanders to be able to look eye to eye with their subordinate commanders, especially in this environment, and be able to exercise them as well in a field training exercise. Yes, uh, we would like in a, in a perfect world to exercise with all our formations, but we understand that reality is uh, everybody is going to be impacted by the budget environment that we're in today. And uh, through, fortunately, through our technology and our advancements in simulation, uh, we have been able to incorporate many of our formations, uh, although be in a virtual construct for this exercise. You talk about cooperation with the other federal agencies. You mentioned FEMA, you mentioned the FBI. Who else is out there? There's, there's many others. I mean, we work with the U.S. Secret Service uh, in some of, of the events that we have here in the homeland. They, uh, they are also great partners. You know, they are impacted as well, I might add, by the budget environment. And so uh, what is amazing to me is that here at Vibrant Response, you actually had FEMA come in, in a pretty big contingent of, uh, of uh, exercise members. And then you also had a state emergency management agency uh, that brought upwards of a hundred people to be a part of this exercise because they also see the importance of being able to respond to the American people in this type of really uh, horrific uh, type of uh, event. In a catastrophic event like what's staged here at this exercise, there's 40 to 50,000 dead. What about the emotional impact that your soldiers will be facing? It's hard. It's hard to replicate really uh, the true environment that uh, our soldiers are, are going to encounter. Uh, but we try in some small part by uh, building scenarios. Uh, we actually go to great lengths 
uh, to train our, our role players uh, and actually uh, go through the moulage piece in effect so that they see, at least in some part, uh, the horrific effects of somebody who detonates a nuclear weapon. Uh, and, but we'll never be able to really truly do that. I think, uh, to be honest with you, uh, the physical uh, destruction that's going to be done in this particular uh, environment or this particular event is going to pale to the psychological effect it's going to have not only on the citizens uh, of the affected state or states, but also on our soldiers. So we've got to prepare them for what they're going to see, and uh, we've got to do as best we can uh, to replicate that environment. So that ain't the first time they really experience it, and that's a difficult process of this exercise. Uh, I, I, I personally think we've got at least a little bit of that, but nowhere in the, uh, in the extremists that it would actually be. Are you satisfied with this exercise? I'm never satisfied with an exercise. Uh, I always think we can, can build on it and do better. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, as soon as we uh, end this exercise, one of the first things we'll do is sit down and we'll run an after action review and determine uh, where we can improve. We call it the, you know, wire brushing, uh, removing the warts, uh, but uh, you know, in a lot of cases, a number of the things we did in this exercise are first. And, you know, it's a first. It's not perfect. So we got a long way to go. Uh, we'll continue to push to improve. We'll continue to invite other partners in because we think there's a strength in, in having partners here. We call it the real live opposing force. Uh, when you have a role player, you, you know, but when you have an actual state uh, coordinating officer, or, or an actual federal coordinating officer, uh, you really can't replicate that. And so to, uh, to improve upon what we have here, uh, I think we've got a long way to go. And, uh, but we're not gonna, it's not from a lack of trying, but uh, I think the next time you see this exercise, it'll be even better. Bottom line, what should Americans like me know about Army North and what you're doing that's going to make us feel good about our continued quality of life. I, I think personally what I'd like uh, the American people to know about U.S. Army North is, uh, you know, back when I was in the uh, 82nd Airborne Division, uh, there was a saying, sleep well at night. The 82nd Airborne is standing watch. Um, I, I like to say that uh, U.S. Army North is preparing for something that we hope will never happen. and we don't want the American people to be concerned about it. Just know that there are men and women in uniform from all branches of service that are working hand in hand with our federal partners to take care of them and to make sure that we do everything we can to serve the citizens of the state and to the nation. Um, that's what we're all about. We're all about partnering and we're all about serving the citizens of this nation, defending them if we have to, working with our partners in the civil support to provide them the necessary requirements should they need them, and working with our partners both in Canada and in Mexico and the Bahamas to build their capacity so that we can work hand in hand to defend not only our nations but to defend them as well. So. I think that's what I'd like to get out about Army North. Uh, we're, we're pretty proud of our soldiers. We're pretty proud of our organization. Uh, I like my mission. Um, I think the soldiers that serve in our ranks like our mission because uh, we're all about serving our nation and most of the time we do it 9,000 miles away. It doesn't get any better than to serve right here in your home. I consider myself uh, extremely uh, fortunate to be leading these great men and women, and uh, I look forward to uh, the next few years where we'll be able to get at a lot of these issues that were raised not only at this exercise, but really what we're, we're working on every day. That to me is exciting. It's a challenge. Uh, it's an opportunity. Just like working in a constrained resource environment to me, uh, in some cases people look at the negative side of it and say, you know, that's a challenge. For me, sometimes it's an opportunity. And uh, we're going to grab onto the opportunity. We're going to go out there. And I think next year, I invite you to come back out and uh, visit our exercise. And I think you'll see uh, that we'll build upon it. 
and, uh, and we still won't be perfect, but we're still going to be getting after things that serve the American people in probably one of the most, I think, uh, horrific things that can affect the American people. We just hope that it never happens, but hope's not a good method. Personally, I, I really appreciate what the men and women that came here for this exercise have done. I think the American public uh, can be proud of their sons and daughters who are standing on point for the homeland.